Uh, the most interesting ones to me are good businesses that were over levered. You shameless cloner, want to track portfolios of famous value investors like Warren Buffett, see their buys and sells, current and historical holdings? Just visit valueinvesting.guru. It is valueinvesting.guru. Link in the description. Sure, I think I said what I said in the book about bankruptcies was basically that uh, the most interesting ones to me are good businesses that were over levered or that there was one business good, one business bad that drove them in or, you know, one time event or something of that nature. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we talked about high returns on capital and, and, and looking for good businesses and, you know, I would tend to look for that to see if the, the nature of the business is good or part of the business is good. You never know how it's going to come out of bankruptcy. One part may be sold off and another. Actually, uh, back in the, uh, back in the 80s, uh, you know, leverage buyouts were really hot, you know, true story. Um, and uh, I was very jealous that th these guys, and at the time you could probably put, uh, put up a dollar and borrow nine was usually uh, the way you could do these things. And, you know, the risk reward looked good and there were a lot of guys doing this and I was really doing investing and I always wanted to be involved with them. one. So one of my friends came to me with a deal and the deal uh, it was a very small leverage buyout. Uh, it was actually uh, uh, being uh, brokered by Drexel Burnham. And they did all the financing. And the way they did the financing was we had, to, as equity holders, we had to put up a million dollars. Uh, and that was you know, a bunch of us. So it wasn't a lot of money uh, for each of us. But it was a small deal, so it filtered down to my friend. Uh, we were all in our, you know, about your age. And, uh, and filtered down to my friend, and we only had to put up a million dollars, and they were going to lend us $26 million. So it was a $27 million purchase price. Uh, now, one warning sign that we should have seen uh, was that the seller uh, was a leveraged buyout shop uh, that had obviously goosed the numbers you know, the year before they sold, they were actually, it was, they made baking pans uh, for, uh, you know, well-known baking pan company, as well-known as baking pan companies can be. Uh, and they made the baking pans for Twinkies and Wonder Bread and, you know, all kinds of different things. And it was kind of an interesting uh, business just to see something that had been around for so many years. Uh, if, if you went to the uh, factory in Chicago, the, the little office outside the factory had about a typing pool of about 20 typewriters and they were manual typewriters from about 1928 or something like that. So, you know, little tip-offs we should have probably seen uh, about this business. Anyway, <coughs> it went bankrupt within <laughs> I think about six or nine months of after we purchased it, you know, being shrewd due diligence uh, Types that we were at the time. And what happened in bankruptcy was that we were able to, uh, the, the, the Drexel bonds, the subordinated bonds that were issued went to zero, you know, were really worthless. Uh, the business had basically imploded, you know, within <laughs> that time, you know, really was never as good as when we bought it anyway. And the bank was on the hook, I think, for about, uh, it, we still owed the bank about $10 million. Uh, you know, even after wiping out the subordinated debt. And so we sold off one of the small businesses for about $3 million. And then since no one else wanted this business, the same guys who sort of took it into bankruptcy, we, we were able to buy the assets, uh, the remaining assets that we had just paid $27 million, less the $3 million we sold off stuff for, for about $6 million. And we ended up, when all was said and done, we ended up doubling the money, original money that we put in, even though it was a complete disaster. And, you know, so a lot of crazy things happened in bankruptcy. The, the business changed significantly, uh, meaning it was much worse than we thought. We sold off a piece of the business. There was one remaining piece of the business that we thought was pretty good that we paid, uh, that, that we were able to get for $6 million. And, and we ended up making a little bit of money in the thing. but. 
uh, in bankruptcy, lots of things happen. The business changes. There might be two or three businesses. One or two may be sold off or liquidated. The remaining business may be totally different than, you know, the look of the remaining business may be totally different than what, what you originally got. So anyway, that was a long diatribe about my uh, first foray into leveraged buyouts. Anyway, so I stick to investing um, in public markets. 